Alright. Guys, let me know how audio levels are. <laughs> hey, Mark. So I, um... <laughs> I, I thought that I would try to use my phone for the first time, see how that went, uh, without you know, trying it first, and uh, oh man, what a cluster that was. So, uh, <laughs> shame on me for assuming that uh, tech would work the way I wanted it to without actually trying first. Good times. Mm. So I've been running around frantically, pretty much swearing, for the last uh, 10 minutes trying to get my normal setup going, which includes laptop, camcorder, um, an HD transfer device, power, tablet, uh, you know, it's, it's um, good times to be had by all. So this live stream, I didn't live stream on Sunday, guys. Um, I just, I don't know, I, didn't, I just didn't feel like doing anything this weekend. I feel like there's kind of a, a juxtaposition, like you'd think the longer you're on lockdown, the more you would want to do, and I, I feel like I've hit peaks where I want to be super productive and do things, then I've hit lows where I do, I want to do absolutely nothing at all, and that was this last weekend, so that's why I didn't live stream, I just, uh, I don't know, just uh, one of those weekends, so this is what was in my pocket today, it's Wednesday, and sometimes people carry Warren Cliffs on Wednesday, and uh, yeah, what a fun knife, um, Really, really enjoy this one. Glad I still have it. Hmm. So, a um, couple things then. Uh, I did get um, a mail call from Blade HQ today. Ordered some stuff. Wanted to, I don't know, something for me and then something for you guys too. Or some people, I guess, will assume. A couple budget offerings that... Uh, were sparking my interest. Um, so I, you know, I don't know. I asked you guys on Instagram if I should open the box or wait till this weekend. And oddly enough, I feel like I could have waited to this weekend to open it. But then I thought, eh, you guys might be bored too. So uh, just finished work and here I am uh, just having technology issues and live streaming. So yep, yep, yep. Um, let's see here. So I did get something in to check out. Let me move this one out of the way for a second. Um, my buddy Adam Purvis over at Purvis Blade Works um, sent me his, I think it's the Progeny version 2 to check out. Um, let's see here. I'm sure you guys know him or know of him. I've had several of his different knives kind of on my on my channel over the years um, and Adam is a good guy so here he is on Instagram uh, a Purvis blades there's his logo because he is a firefighter and he had um, mighty Hanks who are good people um, do a custom Hank for him and this is the I believe it's the progeny virgin 2 yeah Again, I probably should have had all the specs and stuff ready on it, but it just came in today? Yesterday? I don't know. Came in, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Is it this one? Pre-order? Yeah, Progeny version 2. So he was doing pre-orders, or still is doing pre-orders until the 18th. Today is the 15th, so um, that's this model. Um, he does have some different versions and things like that. I don't know if this is going to be one of the standard combos, but it's got some like red carbon fiber that is pretty sweet. And it's got an inset liner lock. And look at the nice milling on that inset liner lock. I love, I love inset liner locks. They just, there's something really, really cool about them. You can't see the lock at all, but it's in there. And boom. So. Love the uh, love the milling that was done on that lock on that kind of relief cutout right there, um, just really nice. But um, this one it's really good. It's um, it I wasn't sure styling how I felt about the progeny. Um, I've had them in the past, but it feels really good in hand. It has a useful blade shape, and then along with the flipper tab, which works well, do you have a thumb stud, 
and he has his kind of custom style pivot here. So that's the Progeny version 2 and yeah, pretty sweet knife. So I'm glad I got to check this one out. Um, what are you guys up to in the comments? Hmm. Yep, yep. So Drake's getting more alcohol. He thought that uh, he thought that this was my uh, mail call when in fact it is a much larger box. So we've got we've got a few things in there. I don't know how much it weighs, but actually, let's find out how much it weighs. You guys aren't doing anything. I'm not doing anything. So just for giggles, let's take what has been kindly dubbed my weed scale. Let's weigh it. Uh, too heavy. <laughs> I don't know how much this goes up to. Usually for one knife it's fine. What does this thing weigh? 3.53 ounces. Full carbon fiber. Nice pocket clip. So yeah, this is this is over a pound of knives. I think uh, I think the tracking info said it was like 1.3 pounds on the tracking info. So who knows? All right. Hmm. Let's see what you guys are up to in the comments. He makes solid stuff. Too small for my double XL oven mitt hands. Dang, Kyle, that is a that's no good. Um like the carbon fiber but not the blade on the Purvis, Dom says. All right. So let's see here. I'm trying to think if I've got anything else new or if we should just go straight into the unboxing. What questions do you guys have on this one right here? I'm not sure if I'm gonna do like a full video per se. Um, so if you guys have questions on it, let me know. Where are the specs? Let me try to find the specs on this one. Hmm. Just flipping through Instagram. Maybe let's go to his website. I'm just going to go to his website because I don't have any of the specs. Progeny version 2. Oh, there's, you can go Damasteel carbon fiber. You can go, ooh, mirror stone washed, 275. That's not bad. I love a good mirror stone wash. Definitely sucker. Here we go. So this, oh, no. Here we go. So this is the version 2 red carbon fiber, black PVD, M390. Looks like it's going to be 260. Mm. There are the specs on that. If you guys are watching this after, you can always pause it and take a look. Um, but yeah, pretty sweet. The red carbon fiber, I'm really digging. I love carbon fiber. And when you get some really cool ones like this, like sometimes you can't see the red at all, and then other times the red kind of pops really well. So it's more of a subtle red. This one's got a little bit more in this side. So there is variation on the carbon fiber for sure. It's got a pretty, it's got a snappy action. It's, uh, it's pretty strong detent, but it works well for both opening methods. Uh, I will say, I wish it had a detent ramp, because we hit here, then you have to overcome that. But other than that, this thing's pretty solid, slightly contoured, nice raised thumb studs with some really good grip. So, thinner blade stock, and it does use a flat grind, so. And it is M390. I think these are produced by Best Tech. I could be wrong. A uh, pocket clip is good to go. So let me look at the specs, or let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, mm -hmm. Greg asks if Kiba goes with me when I go jogging. Well, Greg, I'm, I'm not much of a, a jogger, per se. We definitely take him on some longer walks, but I'm going to be honest, man, my ass has not run in a long time. Go for long walks, though. I'll even hike, but... Um, yeah, I probably should start running again, right? It's like one of the few things I can do since the gym is closed. Uh, right, let's see here. Uh, the blade stock, 140 thousandths. So, let's see what it is behind the edge. I've got my calipers right here. And then you guys think if there's any other questions you have while we have this thing here, zeroed. Uh, 
Don't want to scratch this if at all possible. I have it in millimeters. There we go. Yeah, just about 20 thousandths behind the edge, give or take. Um, maybe 19. That's where I'm at. I'm up on the black. So about 20 thousandths behind the edge, 140 thousandths total um, blade stock thickness. So um, I think the backspacer feels like it's um, it's titanium. So this is a, I think it's a coated titanium clip. Yeah, yeah. So the um, backspacer titanium black PVD hardware stainless black PVD. On this one, it's all satin which looks good. So, anyways, yeah, I, I really like this combo. I'm really digging this red carbon fiber. It just um, looks really good. So, what other options do you have? Uh, blue and black carbon fiber, different combos. Man, I love a good mirror wash. Give me that red with a mirror wash. That'd be my... Uh, That'd be my comp. That'd be my jam right there. So, anyways, um, yeah, pre-orders on those are going for a little bit longer um, to the 18th, and today's the 15th. So, all right, cool. Uh, let me see if you guys had any questions. What brand of caliper is that? I don't. I don't think they're like really good quality or anything. I bought them on probably Amazon a couple years ago. I mean, they've, you know, for what I'm doing, I think they're precise enough, but. I'm sure my friends that are machinists would probably not use these with the type of stuff they do. But, I don't know. It's fine. It's worked. That is the brand, as far as I can tell. So, yeah, no problem there. Uh, Charles, we didn't just start per se, but um, we're, we haven't gotten to the unboxing yet, so... Looking through the comments real quick. All right. Yep. Okay. So that's, I don't know. Yeah. That pretty cool piece. You guys can go check it out. I, I don't think it comes with the, uh, the really cool, um, Hank, but you know, if you're going to pick up some stuff and you want to get a Hank too, I'm sure he's selling these at some point, but yeah, these things are sweet. I've got a bunch of mighty Hanks, so. All right, let's see here. So we do have the box. So any guesses as to what's in it, guys? Charles, man, you're blowing up the comments. I was showing something. I was on my phone. <laughs> I guess you are late. So, um, yeah. So Ben's a 31, that's a good guess. Something stabby, I think that's pretty solid. Who makes your favorite production integrals? I mean, I don't know. This uh, this one from Riot here is pretty freaking awesome. Mmm. Dapper, that's that's a good that's a good guess, you'd think so. Since they just dropped those and that is an exclusive. Uh, but it's not the dapper. A lot of you guys are are on the dapper kick though. Makes sense because they just dropped. What else? What else? What else? I'll give you a hint. There's there's some budget stuff in there, and then there's something that is not budget. So, cheapest production integral might be Blade Runner Systems. They have one called the Ion. That one was like two eighty. Um, that one was also produced by Riot, so I think that one was two eighty. Um, it's Blade Runner Systems or their other brand is, um, oh my gosh, what's their other brand, guys? The, oh, I can't think of it right now. They have stuff under a, under a separate brand. Um, I just can't think of the name of the other brand right now, which is, I should remember it. Uh, someone remind me if you guys know the name of that other brand that Blade Runner Systems does. Oh, looks like Two Sons makes some of the $100 range. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't mess with two sons again. Nothing against them. It's just, you know, you have to go to kind of. I don't buy knives on Amazon, and I don't buy knives on eBay because I don't trust anyone. 
uh, I go to like reputable dealers and stuff so yeah um, I don't know what advice to give you on XHP steel Colby it's a great steel um, it does well um, it is not as stainless as others so you know make sure you keep an eye on it clean it coat it whatever it might be um, so yeah all right no one knows what the other Blade Runner Systems company is. I'll have to just look it up real quick. Um, no, I don't want to give you info. Menu. Blades. It's not Evolution, it's, oh, Evolve. It might be under their Evolve brand, whatever that uh, integral is um, that they produce, so. I should be better at remembering these things, but I am not. All right, I'm gonna stop looking through my phone. But yeah, Blade Runner Systems or Evolve has one, has an integral that, that's like 280 from an established brand that's fairly cheap, um, so yeah. Everyone said Revo. What is Revo? I have no idea. Oh, is that the name of the knife? Is it the Revo? Because the brand is Evolve. Evolve Revo? Oh, I don't know, guys. BRS other company. Is Revo? No, it's Evolve. It is, it is not Revo. It's Evolve. So, yeah, e dash volve. Unless you guys call it Revo for short. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm missing the mark here, guys. So, anyways, um, let's just open it up here before I upset too many people with apparently getting things wrong. Oh. Okay. Let me remove. Shipping stuff. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. All right. Huh. Just dropped one on my foot. Slid out of the box. Okay. Let's move. That is my receipt. Appreciate you guys for hooking me up with some stickers here. Yeah, why not? We'll just leave those kind of scattered, schmattered all over the place. Um, all right, heretic, huh? Her uh, I don't know. I've, I've tried a, a heretic auto, and it was okay. Um, but yeah. Okay, I think Hilo is saying that Evolve is the name of the company, and their line of knives is called Revo. That's slightly confusing. So again, guys, maybe I'm maybe I'm out of the loop on those things, but. Uh, Blade HQ stickers suck. Who actually use them? I don't know. People like stickers. I made stickers. People like my stickers. I mean, you know, to each their own, man. P some people like patches. Some people like stickers. You know, you can kind of collect whatever you like. Yes, Rich, you did see a Kershaw. That's what landed on my foot. So, um, yeah. All right. So first one out of the box um, is a Kershaw, and it is the Kershaw NORAD. So, I wanted to check this one out. This one looked pretty interesting from the Kershaw's 2020 lineup. And honestly, I, I liked a lot of stuff from the Kershaw lineup this year. So, um, this one did intrigue me. Ooh. So, let's see here. Is there a model number on this? Just the 5510. It is the NORAD model. And it's one of the new ones from... 2020. So this one's a full stainless steel frame lock. Does have some, you know, carbon fiber bits in it, but man, this thing is hefty. Um, even though those liners are thinner, you can absolutely feel the heft in this thing. Uh, you can you can tell it's a stainless steel frame lock, uh, and the blade steel is D2, but. Um, yeah, let's let's take a look at this one here. Kind of talk about it. All right, let's see here. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so Hilo was clarifying that apparently BRS has like three brands. BRS, which is the Bally's. Um, they have their budget brand, and then Revo was the, has knives less than 100. Okay, so yeah, I should probably I should probably get with. Uh, I, I like the guys behind BRS. I think they're really good guys. I think they do a lot for their community. So um, Evolve plus Revo. Okay. All right, I appreciate the clarification, guys. Apparently, I have not been following that well enough. I had no idea they had, like, multiple brands over there. So, um, yeah. All right, so, man, this thing's hefty, hefty, hefty. Uh, right off the bat, though, I really like this jumping. That thing is sticky, sticky, sticky. So, this is their budget line uh, coming in, which, again, is why it's a stainless steel frame as compared to you know, like the ZT line, which would obviously use titanium and lock inserts and other things. So let's pull this one up on the Blade HQ website. But I was absolutely interested in checking this one out and seeing if it's worth recommending to you guys. So, oh, it's out of stock. <laughs> okay, well. It was in stock when I ordered it, but it's 68 bucks. Um, we do know it's D2, and it does use a stainless steel frame. So, and it does run on bearings. And uh, yeah, it's sold out. But if you did want to search on the Blade HQ website, there's the Blade HQ item number, and it's the 5510 uh, NORAD. So, all right. Weight. Uh, Blade HQ states this one at 5.2 ounces. Where's my little drug scale at? Let's see what my scale says. How's the locking mechanism? The the lockup on this thing, we'll, we'll talk about it in a sec. We'll kind of go through it. 5.12, they listed 5.2, so I mean close enough. It's, it's a hefty sucker. Um, even has what I assume is a G10 backspacer here. Um, let's look at the the finishing on the backspacer, the fitment. Eh, fairly decent. At least it's the it's centered. Let's look at the lockup. About 50%. You got a good steel on steel contact. Yeah, this thing feels like a tank. So there is no flex to that frame whatsoever. But the flipper tab's done pretty well, even though it's kind of weird that it like has this little bump, because I feel kind of feel like I hit it a little bit, but but everything's been rounded, so but the flipper tab is really nice. It's a, got that nice 45, got the jimping skeletonized which is cool it's got a cool pivot again that's going to be stainless steel and I wonder if it's captured I, I mean I doubt it um, and then the cutout is looks like it's wire it's probably a wire EDM and you do have a deep carry pocket clip so and then you do have this big old fuller so can we do the middle finger flick? Yes, we can. Can we use our thumb on it? It's awkward under the camera. Yep, you can use your thumb on it too, but I don't know, for 68 bucks, like, I, I don't hate it. It's definitely heavy though. I mean, you're gonna feel this thing in your pocket and it's slim too, like it's, it's 5.2 in like a super compact package. It's kind of weird that way. That's how, that's how thick the handle is, 0.43. So, yeah, just kind of an interesting one. Okay, flipper tab slick. No, flipper tab's good. Looks a bit tough to flip. It's actually not bad to flip. I think I think it's just... Nah, it's... Um, it's going to break in, too. I feel like it's going to break in. It's, it's not bad. I mean... So as long as you guys go in this one, knowing that... It's a heavy sucker. I think this is one that that you I don't know, it's fun like visually. It's it's definitely got some of the 
triple nine esque cues as someone in the comments mentioned, but yeah, definitely not bad. Um, all right. Let's see. 67 bucks. Okay. Is is that a DLC fuller group? Um, so this, it's probably not going to be a DLC. This is just going to be like a standard PVD coating. But they did blacken the, the groove here. And that's kind of interesting. Usually they have all their writing here. They put it up in the blackened portion. So Kai, model numbers, you know, 5510 D2 Steel does have, uh, you know, obviously this one is made in China. And so that is here on the blade and Kershaw on this side. So, point of balance. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Okay, so the point of balance, which we normally want, like, right here, is, it is not there. It's not there. It's, it's not there. Might be here. There we go. There's the point of balance. So, it's, uh, I don't know, a one, one and a half fingers behind the pivot. So, it, you know, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. Um, they did... I mean, there's a lot of nice design elements here. I don't know who designed this one. It might be in-house, but um, the way that that's cut out makes it pretty easy to get to that lock bar. So disengage, no stick, flips well. The uh, the carbon fiber looks super cheap. Like, you know, from far away, I, th I think we're good. But the closer you get to it, the cheaper that stuff looks. But you know, what are you gonna do, right? It's Less than 70 bucks. And it's got, a, I mean, it's got a fair bit of machining to it. Like, again, I'm, I'm not mad. I think the weight is just going to be the most surprising thing in that little package there at 5.2. So, all right. Yeah, definitely not real carbon fiber, John. This is going to be like, you know, like the stuff that, um, well, it, not to say it's, it's not real per se, but it's probably going to be, Similar to like what Spyderco uses, where they put a layer of this stuff on top of G10. Um, that's probably what it is, because it does look like real carbon fiber, but you know, it, it, it's not like the same level of carbon fiber as you know, like on this this jack too right here. But you know, we're talking a sixty-seven dollar knife versus a four fifty or four hundred and seventy-five dollar knife. I think that's what this one was, or you know, this carbon fiber looks. Really good too, nice and tight, no voids, doesn't have kind of that, that cheap plasticky look, but yeah, probably real, but just the super thin stuff, so. All right, let's see here. Not the worst for a steel frame. Yeah, you're probably right, John. I mean, it could be, it could be way worse. Is it sharp on the lock bar? No, there's, there's no, um, there's no sharp edges here, and another thing they did well that even way more expensive knives don't do well is you guys see this edge right here for the lock bar cutout. A lot of times that's really sharp on a lot of knives. Um, they actually address that right there, so you know it's it's a it's a well. well let's see any sharp edges. It seems to be a, a decently chamfered. Even back here, these edges aren't sharp. A decently chamfered steel frame knife. So, I got a, a decent enough gap. Let me let me try it in the pocket here. Let me let's see if it if the pocket clip works. Yeah, yeah, no, no drama, no drama on the pocket clip, guys. Pocket clip works works pretty well. So, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not mad at it. Definitely intrigued by it. Um, the jimping's really nice up top. So. It's again, it's relatively comfortable in hand at, at under half an inch. You know, it's um, it's not hand filling by any means, and it's flatter. Well, it's they they made an attempt by doing some milling here and some milling here to give it almost a contoured feel, but it does feel flat in hand. So, all right. All right, let's see what the comments. What are you guys talking about? Are you a boomer? Nope, I am in my. I'm not even in my mid-30s yet. So, unless that's like a derogatory comment about something else that I'm doing, I don't know. Um, let's see. I hear there's nice carbon fiber on those Blade HQ exclusive Sabenzas. <laughs> John, considering you just got one, I'd, I'd assume you're right. 
Um, okay, I like the cutting path and there's no flipper tab in the way. <laughs> okay, Hilo, I DM you about BRS and Revo. Appreciate it. I'll check my DMs later. How's the edge? Let's... It's getting a little bit of hair. It's not not quite shaving sharp though. Let me clean that off. Um, do I have some paper? I do have some paper. Those two pieces. So it's it's absolutely a working edge didn't quite want to pop hair off my arm uh, but I'm not mad at it again for like less than 70 bucks you're looking to have it a good time it flips well I mean you know that's that's one really nice thing about it um, the blade doesn't get caught on the tang or anything so yeah so pretty fun pretty fun knife um, because it is thinner because it has a deep carry pocket clip it it carries better it carries well, even though the weight distribution is a little bit off in hand. So I, here's one you could probably just beat on and have fun with it. The D2, as long as you watch, you know, for any, you know, excessive humidity, I think you're going to be just fine. So um, I think that's that's a lot of fun for uh, for under 70 bucks. Heavy, but fun. So yeah, a little pocket tank. Um, all right. We were just talking about this on Blade HQ. I only got to see part. Um, hopefully, you guys got to watch the live stream that Tim uh, Tim Reeve did with Blade HQ. I'm going to go back and watch that later tonight. I think Tim is a good guy. i uh, love to see what he's doing over at uh, Chris Reeve Knives. So, um, yeah. Do you still have the F95NL? Jordan asks. I do. It's in the other room, though. So, all right. What are your thoughts on Sabenza 31 lock rocking harder than Elvis on meth? Um, I haven't had any hands on. Um, some of the people I've talked to haven't had any issues either, so I can't I can't speak with any degree of certainty, experience. I mean, you know, anything I say right now would just be me talking out of my ass. So I don't have any comments on that. Uh, internal milling. Oh my gosh, there is some. Do I have, I don't have a, where's a flashlight? Here we go. All right. Thankfully, I had a flashlight behind me. There is some internal milling. Can we turn this down? There we go. I'm not sure. You guys can see that? We've got some internal milling. Who would have thought? And it's still, with that internal milling, over five ounces. <laughs> There's internal milling on both sides. And they did some cutouts here for the little... GP carbon fiber, so how funny is that? Imagine if they didn't do internal milling, this thing would be like, what, six, seven ounces? This thing would be a beast. All right, let's see. Right. On the Wii Streak, uh, I don't think I've tried that one yet, so have you handled an RG, uh, JG Rover? I have at Blade Show. I don't remember enough to to really give a comment. You know, it's it's really hard sometimes if you handle something once. It's for a brief period of time, and then a year later, someone asks you about it. Um, is S forty five just an incremental upgrade to S thirty five? I again, a guess. I would say probably yes. But if you guys aren't following, was that knife steel nerd guy? You know, Laren Thomas Thompson. Um, who does the testing? Uh, I mean, he's the guy for that question. So it's knife nerd steel knife steel nerds. Okay, um, if you guys have questions like, hey, is this steel good or is it just you know what is it? Um, this is the guy you want to follow and ask. Knife steel nerds. He is a metallurgist, metallurgist, and he works in the auto industry. But he's the son of uh, Devin Thomas. Um, of Devin Thomas Damascus, which I think is the Vegas one now. Uh, there's a whole change up there. Uh, but this dude's legit, and he does real testing with real data. So he's the guy to ask that type of question to or follow. So, yeah, that that's the right dude for that question. All right, how was the slip joint off last live stream? 
Um, I, I still like the slip joint, so yeah. All right, um, so here's one. Now, let's look at another one. You guys didn't think we just got one, did you? Ooh, the tumbler. So here's another one that I ordered. Check out with you guys. Sue. Top three knives from Kershaw's 2020 lineup. Well, Park Wit, I think we might answer that question tonight. Or at least the ones that interested me. I mean, you know, there's there's arguably different top threes depending on who you ask. So here's number two. And this is one that definitely interested me. I assume that this one would be my favorite, you know, at least out of these two. Um, Sinkovich design. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if it's based on any specific model that he does, but we do have a subframe lock. Uh, obviously, stainless steel. We've got G10, and I think that might be some carbon fiber inlaid into the G10. That's what it looks like. You guys see the, the difference kind of in the middle here? We'll pull up specs in a second, but um, this was one that interested me. Ooh. She's a little gritty, guys. So, a uh, little gritty, but this I would take it apart and clean it for sure. See what, what we can get out of it. Uh, but G10 handles. Let's look, and this is the tumbler. Tumbler. All right. Good news. This one is actually in stock. So, Sinkovich Design Tumbler. Where's the Blade HQ? There's their number if you want to search it on the website, or you can just search, you know, Kershaw Tumbler. Forty thirty eight is the Kershaw model number. This one is in stock. Excellent. Um, let's see here. I was curious to see if the specs, the specs just list handle material as G10, but I don't know. I, I can swear right here in the middle section it looks like it's like a carbon fiber inlaid into the G10 sort of thing. So, huh. Interesting. What is that? The the ledge here, the detent ball is getting cut on the ledge a little bit. It's kind of a weird feeling. <laughs> All right, I'm just kind of messing with it for a second here. Trying to figure out what's going on with it. So, all right, let's kind of take a look here. So we do have it is it is centered. Um, let's look at the fitment on this backspacer. I'm not so sure about that. I mean locked. It feels pretty solid. There's a little bit of flex in the frame in the G10 here, but it feels pretty solid otherwise. And it does flip well. And it is 2.6 ounces on the Blade HQ specs. 2.66 on mine. So, um,. This one's interesting. So again, I, I really like Dmitry Sinkovich in terms of his designs, but I definitely need to tear this apart, um, and I need to lubricate it and uh, you know clean it out and, and see what kind of kind of what it does. But this is the one that, to be honest, I was kind of the most excited about. Um, with you know, I assumed it would be lighter than this. You know. Looking at the specs, I knew this one was going to be lighter. I like Sinkovich designs. I really like seeing the frame lock, you know, the sub frame lock. I like deep carry pocket clips sometimes. Um, 
the edges are a little bit sharper. Like this one actually has more work in contouring the edges than this one. We have a little bit of a sharp edge here. So this one, and, it, and the detent, um, the detent ball, the, the detent ball is getting caught on the edge of the frame lock here a little bit. I think over time that would break in and if maybe if I add a little bit of lube to the uh, detent ball, that might help too. But this one, I don't know. I'd, I'd need to spend more time with this one. I want to like it, you know, as a budget knife. Again, not like as a, hey, this is an amazing knife, but I want to like it as a budget knife. But I, I can't say yet. Um, they did go with a, a more unique pivot, which is always cool. And this thing's got a ton of belly, so. Um, but, yeah, it's it's got some a little bit sharper edges kind of throughout than the NORAD that we were just looking at. So, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm I'm up in the air on this one. Um, between the two, the again, the NORAD just feels a little bit a little bit better. They're both the same price. They're both 67 bucks. So, ooh, I don't know. This one needs time. I need to take it apart. I need to look at some stuff. Um, but I do like the concept of lightweight with a deep carry pocket clip because it means it potentially is something that you can drop in your slacks and, and take to work if you are white collar. So, is the Atmos better? The, um, hmm. You guys know what is better for 80 bucks? Ta-da! Dividend with the composite blade. I mean, you know, if you're going to spend 70 bucks, I mean, go 80 bucks and get this thing for real. That's that's the real winner. That's the real takeaway from these two. Um, actually, so I haven't spent any time with the Atmos, to be honest. I don't know why. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I just haven't. I hear good things, but I don't know. All right, let's see. Detent ramp the wrong way. Uh, better than 8CR. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say what the chemical mixture is on this D2, so. Um, hey, Epic Snuggle Boy, do you have a Discord? I don't have a Discord server, whatever that is. I just don't have time to do Instagram and YouTube and then also I don't have time for Discord and TikTok and Snapchat and Twitter. Like I, I work, you know, I work a lot more than I want to, but it's good to be employed right now, so I am not upset. Alright, so yeah, this one, this one guys, we, ugh, I really need to take this thing apart and clean it and kind of see what it can do. Um, right now I'm, I'm going to give this one a kind of an, an iffy, an iffy recommendation. I just, I don't know, it feels like, I don't know. Just not sure on this one, guys. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. That's a, a strong maybe. So, so far we've looked at the tumbler. You guys can see the detent ball in there. Need to clean that off. So, we've looked at the tumbler. We've looked at the NORAD. I love the dividend. I'm always going to talk about the dividend and recommend the dividend. But, but... What do we have here? The highball. Alrighty then. So, yes, this is the final budget knife. I just, I don't know. I wanted to look at budget knives with you guys, and I like Kershaw. As a, you know, overall, I like Kershaw. I think Kershaw is a good brand. Um, there are a lot of good budget knives coming out of, you know, if you want to go overseas or. Um, you know, obviously these are made in China too. This is made in China, but if you need help or warrant issues, you can call, you know, Kershaw that's in the U.S. and talk to uh, someone there and and get help. So, you know, obviously that is a a strong point of recommendation in terms of you know after purchase warranty and support. But you know, you've got like this Civivi shredder, and you know the the quality and the fit and finish of this versus these other two is is night and day. Um, I don't remember how much this thing was. I think this thing was in the seventy dollar range too. But um, I mean, this thing is legit. So 
you know, I mean, again, don't get me wrong, I love the dividend, but if you don't want an automatic or an assisted opener, um, I think the shredder is, is pretty sweet. So, um, a lot of good options. But, we do need to get to the highball, which is actually a... Oh. I think this thing runs on variants too. We're going to have to look at this one. Alright, let's move some of this stuff. What are you guys talking about? Is the highball competing with the Gerber fastball to which as to which knife will knock your teeth out with the quality control? The battle of the balls. So fun you do budget. Yeah, I normally don't do budget, guys. So again, I will not disappoint because we there's still more in this box, okay? So right now we're just going through the budget stuff. Cause I figured some people may just wanna, you know, kind of blow some money in quarantine. I have, and maybe pick up something fun that's not going to break the bank. So that's why we went with with these Kershaws. Um, and we will give away one of them at the end. There will be a trivia question. I don't know which, I, I don't really want to give this one away. I feel bad about giving this one away just because I think that the <laughs> this one needs some loving first before I decide that it's even worth shipping. Um, but this is a contender for the giveaway. Maybe the fastball is a contender for the giveaway. I don't know guys, we shall see. I'm not mad at this thing so far. All right, let's move this stuff out of the way. All right, what do we got? Yes, I, I do have a bare knuckle. It's in the other room. Um, uh, but yeah, I like the Kershaw bare knuckle. Mine took forever to break in though. I swear that thing took like two months of me just kind of messing with it constantly. Then it finally broke in and then it was like, but before that, it was like, ugh. So, all right. Can you slip in the other room and grab the F95 NL? Jordan, man, why, why are you trying to get me to bring like a $900 knife to the table when I have Kershaw's on the table? The juxtaposition, the chiaroscuro, the night and the day. All right, let's move this stuff. I might. I might run down there. I might grab the bare knuckle. I might grab the F95 NL, we shall see, but let's look at, which one is this, the highball? I already forgot. Yeah, the, the highball, 7010. All right, let's go to the Blade HQ website. Let's look at the highball. Look at some of their specs. Highball. All right, so good news, this one's in stock, and this is the cheapest of the bunch at, uh, you know, 42 bucks. Someone gave it four out of five stars. Let's look at their specs. So it is stainless steel, but the handle's definitely been coated in something. So it matches. Look at look at the color coordination here, guys. This is important. So just want to let you, you know, I guess if I give this one away, I have to give a sticker away too to match it, right? These are like Blade HQ colors. So, all right. Um feels like it's on bearings. Is it on bearings? Flat. I'm pretty sure it is. It feels like it's on bearings. Yeah, I see some. Yeah, this. so this thing's on bearings. And I'm not mad at it. Uh, so, 2.9 ounces. D2 steel. Again, we're still in the Kershaw budget stuff. 3 ounces on my scale. And uh, Ricky's saying it looks better than some of the others. It, I, I think it kind of does. I mean, it might be the best looking of the bunch. Definitely kind of a futuristic vibe here. Um, the blue, which is likely going to be an aluminum pivot collar, looks pretty sweet. Again, stainless steel. So there's the lockup on this one. It feels really solid, uh, you know, a lot like this chunk of steel on the NORAD. It feels very solid. Yeah, it's definitely got some sort of coating over the top of the stainless steel. Um, gives it a little bit more grip here. And obviously that gray coloration. It is centered, although the, the grind on the tip looks a little bit, I mean the grind on the tip's a little bit off, that we can see.
Ergonomically, it, it works well, though. Let's look at the point of balance. Yeah, point of balance is super far back, too. That's where it's at. Again, I like it closer to the pivot, as I'm sure most of you guys do, but, you know, what are you going to do? And it does have a fair bit of internal milling as well. Pocket clip looks good to go. And it's not catching on the, uh, it's not catching on the detent ball at all. So, we know we can, uh, middle finger flick it, no problem. Let's see if we can get a thumb. Yeah, we can roll it. It's doable. We can do a, a roll open. No problem at all. I don't hate this one. I don't hate this one at all. And it still needs to break in, so. Now, will this coating wear off? Absolutely. But for like 40 bucks, who cares? Who cares? What are you guys saying? Alright. Mm -hmm. Front flipped. What can be front flipped? Maybe you're talking about a different knife. Um, I do. So, Sandvik, um, I, I've had really good results with Sandvik. 8CRs, I don't particularly love. I'll take D2 over 8CR any day. I think I'd take Sandvik over D2. But, you know, again, it really comes down to the heat treat and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, overall, high level, that would be my ranking order. Okay. Thoughts on Artisan Cutlery? Uh, I haven't spent too much time with their stuff, to be honest, so I really don't have... Uh, yeah. Really don't have a lot to say there. What are some of these comments? Alright, let me look through the comments. Apparently I'm ignoring people. Uh, and I don't know why a, must, a bunch of these messages are retracted. I don't know if that's like some sort of filter thing or if you guys are deleting your own comments. Give away the Svivi Shredder. Psh, the budget one I like the most. Um, designer Slippy. Front flip. Can you try de-assisting the dividend? I don't know if the blade has a detent hole. I'm not feeling. So normally, when you open a knife with a detent, you'll feel it. I would have to disassemble this one completely. But all I'm feeling is the spring. I don't feel the detent dropping in at all. I'm going to say this one's probably a no on the de-assisting. Um, so yeah, you're, you're not going to get that size and that really cool composite blade. But a little bit larger with a flipper that's manual, it would be the Kershaw bare knuckle, as other people have already mentioned. So yeah. Some people are attracting typos. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. Hey, can you tell me about zirconium? I just got a zirconium pen on a raffle. Um, don't drop it, man. Do not drop it. Normal wear and tear, the zirconium is going to hold up just fine, but you drop that sucker, it's chipping. So, yeah. But I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be a really sweet pen. Nice thing about zirconium is it, it'll go full black. And look, has a really rich, deep black, so that'll look really nice. You should give away your Benchmade Freak. I'm not asking for your thoughts on other stuff I should give away. You gotta, you gotta calm yourself, Hilo. Calm down. All right. So, <clears throat> yes, those are, so those were the budget knives. So, uh, this one, uh, not, not gonna recommend on initial impressions. I'm gonna have to mess with this thing, see you know, what I can do with it, where it can go from here. Might need a little bit of sandpaper here on some of the edges. They're not, they're not terrible, but, you know, they're just not great. So it needs a little finessing, and perhaps while you're in quarantine, maybe you're bored and you want to take sandpaper to stuff. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you have a good time. So, all right, so someone is suggesting the highball. Honestly, I, I'm not mad at this thing. It's kind of a cool little knife. Um, it feels, it feels good in the hand too. It's, it's got a little bit more, uh, girth to it, 
Let's look at the specs. Ah, let's try to get it all around. 4.28, 4.28, 4.32. Interesting. This thing's actually a little bit thicker, but because it's kind of thin and wide, it doesn't really feel, you know, like your hand really doesn't melt into your hand, but this little one that's a little bit thinner, but it's also narrower, um, it just, this one feels pretty good in my hand. Um, I do think out of the three, I think I like this one the most, or I should say I'd be most likely out of the three to probably recommend the highball here. So, but I'll let you guys pick what we do for the giveaway. It is going to be a little bit of trivia and it will be at the end. So, I mean, if you guys really want the tumbler, so you guys pick tumbler, highball, NORAD, you tell me. Okay, highball, highball, tumbler. One vote for tumbler. Uh, don't have any experience with quiet carry, hunting for sharp things, so I can't tell you. Um, but some people I know and I respect have some good things to say about some of the quiet carry models. So, oh, so we got three highball. We got I think I think highball. Yeah, they're all D two, uh, Gennady. So let the winner choose. Hmm. Let the winner choose that. Okay, I guess that's fair. But I mean, I don't know, man. Everyone's saying highball. Let the winner choose. I mean, we can do that. I mean, I th that's fine. I guess. I mean, you guys would rather see the highball giveaway, which means you probably want the highball. But I suppose I'll let the winner choose. Just keep in mind if if you pick the tumbler, I I just think it needs a little bit of love and before you know you throw it in the pocket completely. Um, but yeah, so, <sighs> trivia, 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 all right, you, should we do it now or should we wait to the end before we do the giveaway? Because I have one more knife that I do want to show you guys. Closest competition to a Koenig Arius, Eric asks, um, I don't know, probably a Shiro? Like, Koenig is like the U.S. version of a Shiro in terms of quality and fit and finish. Um, I'm a big fan of, of Koenig knives, really like Bill, so that'd be the way to go. Oh, wait till the end. Oh, man, I'm getting end, I'm getting now, I'm getting end, I'm getting now. Why can't you guys just all choose together? Let's make democracy work here. Don't make me a dictator. I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting more nows. Oh, see, another wait till the end. Holy cow. I got a meow. I support that thoroughly. Thank you, Sam. All right, all right. I'm getting, I'm getting meows and nows. Meow now, now meow. Okay. So here is, so here's the trivia thing. Here's the trivia thing, and I need to look it up. Give me a sec, guys. I don't, even, I don't even remember. Um. So let's do. Uh, okay, I'm looking it up. You guys ready? So it's going to be the first person to respond with the correct answer. So we're going to do it now, guys. The first person to respond. So on what episode of Knife Banter with Blade HQ did I appear? I need the episode number. I'm getting wrong answers so far. Wrong answers. Holy moly, guys, where's your Google Foo? Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, what's Bork Markin 30? Yeah, let me let me scroll back up. Bork Macklin. I think he was the first person to say 30. You guys fact check me, but it was, in fact, episode 30. And I, I have to skip the ad. Uh, skip, skip, skip. I don't care about raid. Oh, you son of a bee. Oh, guys, we all struggle.
So, yep. Knife Banter, episode 30. Epic Snuggle Bunny. Alright, guys, fact check me. I think it was Bork Marklin. Bum -ba -dum. Bork Macklin. Whoa. Sponsored by Rig Shadow Leagues. Good God. Okay, Bork. Um, my man. What? Or you could be a woman. I don't. You could be a unidentified gender. I don't know. What would you like? You get to pick out of the three. I'm, wait I'm waiting on you, Bork. You tell me which of the three, my man. Which of the three? Mm, I'll take the highball. All right. Um, shoot me a... Or I'll try to message you. I better write this down. Holy cow. I better write... Well, it'll be in the history. Hold on. I don't want to get it wrong. I'm just going to take a picture. That is a video. I suck. Okay. I'll, I'll try to message you on, uh, on YouTube, and uh, that way you can just give me your address, and I'll make sure it's actually going to the right person, and not some shysty McShyster. So, all right. Let's do this then. So, I'm going to show you guys the last thing that I got. And, guys, we'll do more giveaways um, on more live streams, so this wasn't like a one-time deal, but this one will be gone. I'll be going to uh, Bork. And, uh, yeah, I'll let him break that thing in, clean that thing up, lube it, whatever he wants to do. But now, okay, so the next one, guys, is, is not a budget offering at all. If you had to guess, what, what do you think it would be? Ooh, taking it out of the plastic wrap. I'll give you guys a hint. It came with this cloth. Cleaning cloth. This is what it came with. Custom Knife Factory. Not not Custom Knife Factory. Not a Sabenza 31. Ooh, Kyle thinks he knows. Mm, I, I need more bags, but it's not a bag. need more bags, though. Nope, not a Ferrum Forge. Not a Lamech. Not a Wii. Come on, guys. I want you to think upstream. No, not a Kaiser. Nope. Not Shira. Nope. Not Norseman. Thro nope. I'm, I'm going to have to put you guys out of your misery here. m -tech. Oh, Dom. How did you know? Oh, how did you know it was an m -tech? <laughs> Definitely an m -tech. <clears throat> All right. So I'll give you guys a hint. And, and it's going to be a very strong hint. Nurse, I have no idea. There's the hint. <laughs> there must be a lag, because you guys keep throwing out just the wildest stuff. Oh, Ark Wit. Oh... You don't win anything, but uh, but apparently you know what this is. <laughs> ah, yes. Hello, friend. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, if, if I got that, that'd be nice. All right. So, Rockstead, you guys know what this is, or most of you guys know what this is, but... Uh, Made in Japan. Oh, you lovely thing. Made in Japan. Which model, though? Oh. <laughs> Hard quit. If you if you rage quit, I will. <clears throat> I'll understand, man. I mean, you got to rage quit at one point in time. So, what model could it be? Actually, you guys, you guys are tired of guessing. Let's be honest. Got some certificate of authenticity in here. Ah, the tie. Whew, what a lovely thing. 
you should give it away. Yeah, Hilo, I don't I don't think Ooh, Dom Bond, my man. You know what's up? You know what's up? Oh yes. You know what's up. The shin it is. The shin it is. Ooh. So Ooh. This thing's coming super smooth out of the box. Ooh. It took my took my tie a little while here to uh to break into kind of how smooth this one is. So um, ZDP 189 clad in uh, VG10, I think is what this one is. And then this one is YXR7 DLC coded. So you have, you know, a DLC coded version and then you have just a standard, uh, you know, beautiful polished. Oh my goodness, they're so reflective. So reflective. <clears throat> Mtex, better Japanese brand. Connor, how did you know, man? I have so many open knives on the table, I've almost cut myself like five times, guys. I put myself at risk for you, and only you. You should... Mtex actually has mirror polished knives. Connor, I, I hope that's true. I hope that's true. And this is Stingray. Look at the different kind of size. Guys, yeah, Stingray, I love Stingray. It's just so premium. It's just such a cool material. Oh. <clears throat> now, you guys know, one of the cool things about the Rocksteads is that they don't mess around when it comes to performance, Rockwell hardness, <clears throat> all that good stuff. So, um, please keep this paper in a safe place. Look at the hardness on that. 66.7. That's where they Rockwell tested this bad boy at. Woo! Yes, sir. -y. So, yeah. And then, uh, you know, you go ahead and you, uh, yeah. Then you register it, and, uh, yeah, good stuff. So, that is what came today. How long have we been live streaming, guys? I cannot even see how long this thing's been going on. 67 minutes. Okay. So, can it cut a brisket, Charles asks. Man, you can do a lot more than cut a brisket with one of these. So, yeah. Super stoked to uh, finally have a shin. Um, definitely was on my, my want list for a long time. And uh, uh, does not disappoint in the slightest. So... Uh, took a lot of self-control to wait to open this box with you guys. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so we took a look at a lot of different things today. Uh, we took a look at some rock studs, which is always, always a good thing. Oof, always a good thing. Oh, I love the way that the ergonomics are better here on the shin uh, than they are on the tie model. Um, this thing just, like, fits amazingly well in your hand, so really nice. Uh, but we did take a look at the NORAD. We took a look at the questionable tumbler. We took a look at the highball that my man won and I already lost it. Where the hell did it go? Here it is. Took a look at the highball. So that is what we did today. Is that fuller? Um, Charles, so the, the fuller on this thing, I think that they use that to like hold the blade down while they do certain uh, machining or finishing processes, but then obviously they made it a little more decorative kind of with the fuller, so it's not a trademark per se. I think it's just part of the machining process, uh, but there's so much lore out there um, that I can't say with absolute certainty that that's the case, just more than likely that's probably the case. So, yeah. Mm. Let's see here. Uh, price for which one knife upon a Dan like 40 something 60 something 60 something 1200 something <laughs> So yeah, the pivot is actually hidden underneath the scales So you don't you don't remove the ray skin you remove the scales uh, Completely to get down to the pivot. So there are the screws and then uh, once you pull this off then the pivots kind of in its own uh, like it's got some posts and some like a uh, caging that it that it sits in so it's really interesting 
Yeah, the aesthetics, I, I agree with you. Powell is uh, aesthetically, this has such amazing visual balance and a really, really good looking uh, blade shape. And um, this is, you know, the first one I got, because to me, this is the quintessential Rockstead. Um, but a friend of mine, uh, Nick in uh, Utah, who I did some videos with, he had a shin and I always admired it. And I always thought, you know what, I think the ergos are better on it. And they absolutely are. It kind of locks your hand in almost like a, a, you know, the pommel flares a little bit. So this one's better in terms of uh, ergonomics. It's also 3.5 versus the 3.75 inch blades. So uh, a little bit smaller, just kind of the, the perfect size. So um, even though this is the one that I think fits the bill better, this is one that I would probably recommend first in terms of just ergonomics and size. So yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna give away the mini buster? Behan, dude. What what are you giving me? I, I just want a uh, I want an integral. I want a Michael Raymond. So I mean we can trade. If you want that mini Buster man, I'll take a Michael Raymond any day of the week. So uh, don't don't even don't even feel sad. So Nick Shabazz is actually in San Diego. He's not in Utah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Chris, don't be sad, man. You've, you've got enough. You have, like, what, 17, 18 of those bad boys? Like, you won't even miss it. it but you'll have a mini buster, and that, my friend, is winning. Do you want a prime, a Carter Prime? I don't, no, I'm, I don't think so. I mean, if, if I want one, I'll just, I'll just pick one up and I'll do a video on it. But I don't think it really, uh, I don't think it's really on my radar at the moment, so... Um, let's see. I'll trade you for the Benchmade Freak Hi Freak Hilo Man. I, I don't do trades. If there's something I want, then I will just buy it. So, which, you know, which I did. Which, you know, which I do. That's how I do. That's how he do. All right. Sword Peasant. I can write your name on it with a Sharpie. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are going on about. All right. We'll end it there. Um, I need to track down my friend who won. Make sure I get this out to him. Um, guys, guys, I don't, I don't need anything. I don't need you to sell me things or, or give me things. I will just buy what I need. Not letting it go, John. Killing me, man. Killing me. I had a, I had a long mall with a damn steel. But, anyways, all right. So we'll leave it there. Um, more live streams. We'll do some more giveaways. We still have the NORAD to probably give away at some point. I may throw some other cool stuff on the table. Um, uh, I need to do another giveaway on Instagram, but, uh, yeah. Um, as long as I don't have to fill out freaking spreadsheets with everyone's name and then randomly pick and spend three effing hours on a giveaway, happy to do them. So that's why the trivia was good. Um, we'll have other trivia stuff for future giveaways, so not that you'd ever want to fill your head with epic snuggle bunny trivia, but that's what it's, it's going to take to get a budget knife that you probably don't even want. So... I mean, that's just the game, guys. You know, don't hate the player, hate the game. So that's what's up. Yeah, Jordan, I'll grab the F95 NL next time, I think, if, if you really want to see it. I've got a pretty good video on that, so you could always check out the video. But, yeah, it's Wednesday. It's late. I am i don't know if I'm hungry or I'm bored, but I'm going to go eat nonetheless because that's what you do when you have nothing else to do. So, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. Appreciate you guys participating. Thank you for making the comment section a flaming hot dumpster of uh, burning trash. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.